Today we're talking about recreation across the watershed, and it's the Bay is for play. And when we say the Bay, we mean the Chesapeake Bay watershed. So it's the Bay itself, it's the rivers that bring water to it, it's the lands that surround it, it's the forests where it starts all the way up in the state of New York. So we'll go through a few of those. That's me in the center, Caitlin Johnstone. I'm with the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay and the Chesapeake Bay Program. I do outreach and communications for the program and I'm a naturalist with the state of Maryland. We also have Michael with the Chesapeake Conservancy and Albin with what we call WASHCOG, um, but we try not to do acronyms. So that's the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments and I'll let them introduce themselves. So Michael. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Bowman with the Chesapeake Bay Gateways Network. I'm the Partnership Communications Coordinator and I do work with the National Park Service Chesapeake Bay Office and the Chesapeake Conservancy. I handle their social media communications and outreach, um, writing press releases, and I also manage the Chesapeake Grove Ranger, which I'll be talking a bit about later. Happy to be here. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Aubin Maynard. I'm with Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments, or COG or WASHCOG. Um, and uh, as you can see in my image, I'm usually in the streams doing a lot of um, fish and macroinvertebrate work and water quality and monitoring. But I do, um, COG covers, is a regional planning office and covers the DMV for a lot of coordinating work. And I work for the Anacostia Restoration Watershed Restoration Partnership. And we do a lot of uh, work in the Anacostia watershed. All right, thank you. And let's jump in and hear a bit about that watershed. So this is it here. When we say the Chesapeake Bay, that's that dark blue all the way down at the bottom. But the watershed is any land that drains to the Chesapeake Bay. So if it rains in this light blue section, it ends up in the Chesapeake Bay. So it's the 64,000 square mile watershed with more than 18 million people and more than 150 major rivers and streams. You're joining us during Chesapeake Bay Awareness Week, which is a celebration um, that we hold each year in June and it's for the full watershed. So this year, the theme is on recreation. Uh, you're joining us for the eighth, which I believe is in your home, yes. Uh, we started with the water, parks and trails, things to do in your neighborhood. Tomorrow we get connecting with food, which is one of my favorites. There are some really fantastic regional recipes, um, a whole Eat the Invasives campaign, which is quite fun. Uh, and then we get into community science, museums, volunteering, stewardship, really great activities and many, many organizations all throughout the watershed that are involved. So check it out at that link there and see what you'd like to get involved in. We're gonna start here. We'll go through quite a few um, organizations and different areas of the watershed talking about recreation. As you hear all about them, you're gonna be, oh, I wanna do that. The resources will be linked at the end of the webinar. So when we get to that last slide, it'll be a whole slide of links that you can copy paste and add in there. We're gonna start with Black Girls Hike RVA, which is a group that was formed by these two women here. They're gonna give you a little hello. Um, but before we get into all of the presentations, I'd like to wish everyone joining us today a happy World Oceans Day. So we'll go right into our video. Hi, I'm Nicole Boy, co-founder of uh, Black Girls Hike RVA. And I'm Nashara Tucker, the other co-founder of Black Girls Hike RVA. And we're here just to tell you a little bit about our group and why we got started, um, when we got started, and anything else that you may want to know about our group. So um, it kind of started when I was celebrating my birthday. Um, it was a birthday hike, and I wanted to invite some of my friends with me. And I've always been sort of an outdoorsy person, but um, and I thought my friends would enjoy it because I'm the one to, to get them to come outside and try new things, and Shar was part of the group. And so I decided to go to Crabtree Falls and um, we were going to do like a hike and wine. And so this is always a part of the story that I just uh, piggyback it to her. <laughs> um, 
when we went to the hike that day, I asked, hey, what should I bring? Um, do I need a hiking stick, some hiking boots? She's like, oh no, you don't need any of that. Needless to say, um, it was a crazy adventure. We didn't even make it to the top um, that day when we hiked uh, just because we wanted to go to the wineries, but it was just very difficult um, for us to finish. So Nicole's job after that dreadful day was to help me um, learn to enjoy hiking and fall in love with it. And I, I do love hiking. I love being outdoors um, and with us, Starting Black Girls Hike RVA, we just wanted to create a safe space for um, women of color, people of color. Um, we're teachers by nature, so we most definitely want to influence teenagers um, and kids, young adults to get outside and hike and be active, um, not just for the health benefits, but also for the mental um, benefits that come with um, hiking and doing different recreational activities. Absolutely. Um, and so in, in trying to do and doing some of our hikes, that's really why we got started. We noticed that there weren't a lot of people that looked like us on the trails. Um, and so we thought that was a, a, a good opportunity to just start this group and um, to provide a safe space for women of color. And like Shara said, um, to influence um, even the next generation, because when we are hiking with our group, there are uh, women who have been hiking, who have, it's their first hike and they range in anywhere from 30, 40, 50, we've even had 60 year olds uh, to come out with us and, um, and saying that, that they are appreciative of us creating this group. So that's why we created it. And um, we know that it is bigger than us and, and we're, um, we're super excited to push forward with this group and, um, and welcome women of color to get out there and get out in the outdoors with us. Um, we also, every quarter, so four times a year, have some hikes that our allies can come to. So um, one is coming up on June 19th, if you're interested, and it'll be at Pocahontas State Park. You can check out our website. Yeah, Nicole and Hi, Charlie, so unfortunately, could not be with us today because they're teachers. They're teaching their students, um, but they wanted to say hello. And their resources uh, links to them will be on the last slide definitely check it out and hear shara's story about how a disastrous day uh, actually led to her loving nature because it's a good one and here we're going to have marcus asante telling us about universal sailing when you're on a sailboat with the engine off, the sails up, you know, you're fully engaged with the wind, with the water, with tides. Sailing is a mechanism for you to engage or to interact with nature on a higher level. As I learned to sail here on Chesapeake Bay, I had to sort of barge my way into the business. I didn't know how I was going to learn to sail or who was going to teach me or anything like that. As I looked around the sort of seascape at that time, I noticed that there were not any African-American sailing clubs on the Chesapeake Bay. I saw the need for it and I jumped in and I said, hey, I'm, I'll just have to do it. We feel really blessed to be here in Baltimore where we have this intersection of history, culture, uh, the past and the present, and we can get out to the rest of the world from here very easily. Yeah. Hey guys. Sailing fits into this because it's a connection to your local waterways. So that's what the bay means. It, it, it's something for everyone here, and it's up to you to engage in it in the way that you can find to see that these waterways in particular are central to our understanding of the past, the present, and the future. You can find out more about Marcus Asante's group and other organizations um, by checking out the website there. But we're going to jump into Michael, and he's going to tell us about a lot of different resources and activities all across the watershed. Thank you, Caitlin. So hi, everyone. Um, I said earlier, I'm Michael Bowman, and I'm with the Chesapeake Bay Gateways Network. Um, and today, I wanted to talk a bit about the various recreation resources we have available from the network and our partnerships. Um, so next slide, please. So first off, I want to talk a bit about the Chesapeake Bay Gateways and Water Trails Network. I'm sure some of you might be familiar with the Gateways Network. It's a 23-year-old program first authorized in 1998 from the Chesapeake Bay Initiative Act. 
So the Gateways Network acts as a partnership system of 170 special and authentic Chuffy places, such as parks, museums, water trails, what have you, um, that are dedicated to helping visitors learn about the Chuffy Bay, its watershed, and exploring it. With that, I want to delve into some of the unique and fun programs that support and expand upon the network. Um, so next slide, please. First off, we have our iconic site, findyourchesapeake.com, which acts as a tourism-based website for the Chesapeake Bay watershed. It showcases over 374 sites, new ones are being added all the time, throughout the Chesapeake Bay watershed. This includes the original 170 gateway sites, in addition to many other local, state, national parks, museums, water trails, nature centers, etc. Find Your Chesapeake was designed to make recreation easy and accessible for those that want to learn the best spots, either locally or regionally, and for those that want to do any activity. When first designed, we had six ways to categorize activities. So finding your Chesapeake on the water, on the land, um, education, science, history and heritage, trails and tours, and family fun. But with COVID-19, we added an additional way to find your Chesapeake. For um, those that want to enjoy the Chesapeake Bay virtually, we created virtual visits. So for those that can't easily get outside, readily access the Chesapeake Bay, or if you just want to stay inside for a day, you can explore the bay from the comfort of your home. So let's say you want to go hiking in Pennsylvania. You could filter for parks and sites that offer this activity and then just narrow it down by state. Or if you want to go camping in Virginia or tubing on the Eastern Shore, you name it, we likely have it. In addition to the many places on Find Your Chesapeake, we also publish weekly blogs, photo essays, interviews, and more to encourage people to get a more in-depth look at specific sites in the watershed, learn how to do certain activities, or discover the best places to do an activity. So one example of the many activities we have posted is our Find Your Chesapeake GeoTour, which encourages visitors to hunt for special caches, um, hosted at a selection of watershed sites, and then earn a special commemorative coin when you're done. Super cool. Right. Next slide, please. So also on Find Your Chest Peak, we have um, our weekly newsletter, Chips and Fits. Um, I'm sure some of you might be subscribed, um, but it rounds up a selection of events and activities at various, various watershed sites that are coming up and emails it directly to you. These events are also hosted on findyourchestpeak.com under the events tab along with many other regional events and activities. Um, and then we also have an option for partners and members of the public to upload their own events as well. So with, uh, with COVID-19, we also altered our newsletter to encompass many virtual events, webinars, and resources for those that also wanna stay home. Next slide, please. Um, so we have our glamorous paddle sites. So these four sites are Paddle the Potomac, Paddle to Chester, Paddle to Sassafras, and Paddle to Susquehanna. These four sites were published between 2016 and 2019 and exist as sister sites to Find Your Chesapeake. So while Find Your Chesapeake is all about exploring the land and ground of the watershed, the paddle sites are, in their name, they exist to learn, help you learn more about the waterways of the bay. So these sites cover 890 miles of waterways combined with each site hosting unique water trails, itineraries, public launch sites, water conditions, and more. Many of these sites were, or all of these sites, were developed in partnership with many local organizations, such as Sultana Education Foundation, Potomac Conservancy, Susquehanna National Heritage Area, and Susquehanna Greenway Partnership, to name just a few, but there are many others. So next slide. Um, keeping on the theme of waterways, we also have our virtual river tours developed in partnership between Chesapeake Conservancy and Terrain 360. So just like the paddle sites, these virtual river tours give away their purpose in their name. These tours allow you to tour the many waterways and special places of the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries from the safety and comfort of your own home. With over 14 waterways and tributaries showcased on the site, you could find a river practically anywhere in the watershed um, and take a virtual tour today. So we have Mallows Bay, um, Bones Cliffs, the Nanakook River, Pocomoke River, um, Baltimore Inner Harbor, um, and many others are just a few of the many selections we have available. And just last year, Tangier Island and the Pocomoke River were added to the site. So we're always looking for special places and tributaries to add to our collection of tours. All right, next slide, please. All right, so 
like many national parks, we the National Park Service Chesapeake Bay Office has their own junior ranger program. The program debuted in 2019 um, and teaches kids and kids at heart to explore, learn, and protect the Chesapeake Bay. So you can follow along in the activity book, which you can easily download um, and do easy activities such as crosswords, the word searches, puzzles, and whatnot to explore and reflect upon the Chesapeake Bay. Once completed, you can send in your booklet to receive a signed certificate and your very own Junior Ranger badge that you can see on the slide. Um, the education team at the Park Service, Chesapeake Bay Office, is also working on two new booklets that follow education standards. Um, so teachers and other educators could use those booklets in their lessons. All right, so next slide, please. And then last but not least, and my personal favorite, we have the Chesapeake Roving Ranger. So this truck was developed in partnership between the National Park Service Chesapeake Bay Office and Chesapeake Conservancy and operates as a mobile visitor center for the two offices and the gateways network. While the Chesapeake Bay doesn't have a national park dedicated to it yet, um, the Roving Ranger fills in this gap by bringing the national park experience to visitors where they are. Since rolling out in 2017, the trucks visit many parks, museums, nature centers, camps, festivals, and showcases. The list goes on and on. Um, it's staffed by members of the offices and gateways network. These Roving Rangers have reached over 10,000 people um, in the few years that it's existed, with the Roving Ranger delivering talks about the importance of the Bay, um, helping people find out about the best places for recreation, providing interpretation and environmental education programs, and even helping people find local bathrooms. Um, true story. All right, next slide, please. So I'm gonna close out on a quote from Chesapeake Conservancy President and CEO, Joel Dunn. We know that when people are able to experience the bounty of the Chesapeake Bay, they'll be more likely to protect it. At our offices, we believe that one of the best ways to get people to wanna to protect the Chesapeake Bay and its watershed is to have them experience it. So whether you're at home, on a boat, in a park, or whatever other way, we want you to be able to experience the Chesapeake Bay watershed for what it is. We also know that for many, public access is an issue, especially for underserved communities and communities of color. But we've made an intentional effort to partner with various organizations, agencies, and community partners to better increase public access for you and other communities in the watershed. This invo also involves creating programs to better engage with you and other visitors of different backgrounds and offering programs to better communicate with many, many visitors. Um, that covers many facets of recreation within the Chesapeake Bay Gateways Network, and I could keep talking on and on, but with that, um, I want to turn it back over to the Bay Program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Now, Michael went over a lot of resources and projects for all across the watershed, um, but there are thousands, tens of thousands of streams and rivers in the watershed that have a whole lot of activities. Uh, you can find out more by looking for friends of your local river um, and find out all the great activities that are available there and in the lands surrounding it. Alvin is gonna give us a deep dive into just one of those rivers and its many activities on the Anacostia. Can you guys hear me? We can, go right ahead. All right, all right, here we go. So uh, my again, I'm Aubin Maynard and I'm gonna talk a bit about the Anacostia watershed, uh, some of the things that we go on in our watershed and, and some of the barriers to our activity. So next slide. So just real quick, again, I work at the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. We're like a regional planning office and that little map you can see all our members. And so we work overall there. Next slide. However, my most of my work happens in the Anacostia watershed. And so here you can see the Chesapeake Bay and the darker uh, in the Potomac watershed and, um, and the Anacostia watershed. It's only 176 square miles. Um, and it covers Montgomery and Prince George's County in, in Maryland and parts of the D District of Columbia. Next slide. Again, here's, here's the map of the watershed. Next slide. Uh, a, a few few more tidbits about the Anacostia water, 
river and watershed, we have only 8.4 miles of, of tidal river. And that's the section in the, the bottom there from the um, Potomac up into just over the border into Maryland. But it's very heavily developed and we have a lot of impervious surfaces. Next slide. And um, just a few of the things is that over the years, like many rivers, the Anacostia has suffered uh, from trash, toxics in the fish, um, and um, development along the shores. In fact, the river itself within the District of Columbia historically was used as a dividing line between communities. Um, however, next slide. Things have been improving immensely. The, the trash is being cl cleaned up. There are over 60 miles of nature trails or hard surface trails along the river and, and its tributaries along the streams. The water is improving and we're really focusing on bringing people back to the river. Next slide. Um, and we're reaching out to folks through social media, through advertising, through hitting on some of the major points of, of, of the great work that's being done within the river. And today I'm going to kind of go from the southern port up to the north part of the watershed and just highlight some of the neat activities that are kind of focused or and locations focused on bringing people back. Next slide. Uh, in the District of Columbia, we have Friday night fishing, which is set up along the river along and they set up um, along the wharfs and they just bring in um, everybody that walks by can come and throw out a line and they're focused on um, getting people to fish and talking about the river and river health. Um, super fun. Next, next slide. Uh, the District of Columbia has also started the Green Boat program. This recently started and is extremely popular. They, they rent out well, for free, they rent. You can borrow a, a canoe from um, Kingman Island, and but there's a catch. You have to, on your journeys around, you must uh, collect litter into the boat. So you're given trash bags, trash grabbers, and when you come back, you have to sort it out and um, count how much litter you have. This is this program. For the next three months, all the boats have already been booked up, and so they're examining ways to provide the local um, communities uh, ways to sign up so that they can have a spot. So, and they're gonna be adding more boats. Next slide. Um, there are just so many amazing parks and places along the river. The, the Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens in the district is just this amazing jewel of a park within the district proper. If, if you've never heard of this place, check it out. They have, uh, starting now, the 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 uh, lotuses are starting to uh, bloom. Um, and they run many programs for the local communities here on uh, environmental education, getting the kids out, et cetera. Next slide. And then moving up into Maryland, the Bladensburg Waterfront Park is uh, a great place to rent boats. They have crews that go out there, the fishing. Um, and next slide. Here we host, I, I, I work with this, the Anacostia um, Festival del Rio Anacostia. And this is a cool, amazing uh, festival that's focused on, uh, it's a bilingual festival and it's focused on bringing culture, uh, food and education together to reach out to the Hispanic communities. So most of the folks that join come are a lot of first generation families and uh, we get them out um, on the river. There's education, free giveaways, um, trash pickups. It's actually very popular. Uh, in the bottom left, you can see our, um, we work a lot with the local schools to act as translators. And you can see one of the, the, kid, the young people uh, dressed in uh, one of the trash bags <laughs> suits that we have. Um, and that has, uh, I forget, a thousand trash bags talking about litter and where, where it comes. So it's a fun time. Next slide. Believe it or not, even in the Anacostia River in BC, 
proper, well, outside of DC in, in Maryland, we have Greenbelt um, MPS Park. Uh, and you can actually go camping there. And so folk, we're, we're focused on bringing the, the folks that are in the city out into this great location that's just right there over the border. Next slide. Um, and even cooler is that we have a lot of nature trails that are, are not developed. Um, and um, again, these are very cool. Next slide. Um, and of course, you can't talk about the District of Columbia and the area or this whole region without a little bit of history. And this is this is a Woodlawn Manor Cultural Park in the north north section of um, Silver Spring. And this is a really neat place where you can um, explore a, an old farm. And uh, there was an old part of the Underground Railroad goes there. And of course, you can visit the this is the most northern spring in the river, the Sandy Spring, where the Anacostia River starts. And, and of course, as Caitlin mentioned, any, any stream and river, you got to look locally for really neat activities. So the Friends of Sligo Creek is a smaller stream in the Anacostia watershed. And they have bird walks, they have nature walks, they have weed warrior programs where they control evasive. So there's all these wonderful local activities um, that that you can find spread around everywhere. Next slide. And so uh, one of the things my organization is doing is we have enjoythenacostia.org and uh, we're putting all, thousands, well hundreds of events from around the, the city um, and the region um, where you can check it out. So like here, June 16th, Flying Squirrel <laughs> in, at Brookside Nature Garden. Very fun. All right, next slide. So again, check us out on some of our um, um, social media. We post a lot of nature pictures. Like I said, I'm usually in the streams doing all sorts of um, fun and interesting stuff there. So we've got lots of fun, fun, fun photo, photos and information out there. Next slide. And that, that, that's, that's it for now. Thank you, Alvin. I, I might have to join you for the flying squirrels. Fun fact, flying squirrels uh, fluoresce at night. So go and see what? what that is. Yes, <laughs> they're very cool. So I'll talk a bit about the Chesapeake Bay program uh, where you can learn fun facts like that about flying squirrels and other creatures. Um, so we're the partnership that covers the whole watershed. So New York, down to Virginia and out to West Virginia and Delaware. Um, we're able to put on webinars like this because we're the partnership of everybody. So it's local and state governments. Albin, it's, it's uh, nonprofit organizations like the Conservancy or the Alliance, it's uh, federal groups where NOAA and the Park Service and the Forest Service. So a um, whole lot of us working together because air and water don't really stop at state lines. So covers the whole thing. And uh, over that 64,000 square miles. And I'll show you a bit of what you can find out from us uh, before you get out there into the watershed. So we cover stories and information. Um, you'll see deep dives into particular areas across the watershed. You'll learn interesting facts like the, the science behind nature's effect on the body. Um, certain trees actually emit chemicals that interact with your cells and, and boost your immune system. But really, really cool research. And then um, looks into different happenings across the watershed. So like the sensory trails that are accessible parks and where to find them in the watershed. We can go to the next slide. Um, because for the, the whole watershed, it's a, a very broad reach. So you can, these are different articles. You can look up uh, different things to do during awareness week, different articles that pop you all across the watershed and, and kind of travel virtually. So the seven national park sites you've never heard of or um, organizations that you've never heard of or that are new and up and coming and kind of changing the face of outdoor recreation, where to find them, how to get involved in them. So you'll find that in our in the news section. And then we also have tips and guides for pretty much everything that you want to do out there. So we've got a field guide that covers plants, animals, you know, insects, algae, 
trees, mammals, um, learn about whether or not there are sharks in the, in the bay. There are um, different habitats and, and what lives there. How to videos and articles to find out how to do different things. So like how to shuck an oyster or pick a blue crab if it's tomorrow and you're, you're getting involved in Chesapeake Bay Awareness Week's cooking day or you wanna go out birding. There's an article on how to do that. We have a whole guide on what to expect when you go out hiking so that uh, you don't end up with Shara's first horrible day of hiking. You can get a little prep in beforehand. Because we're that big partnership, we also have guides to many other things like this. The, we have an SAV watchers program that was uh, put together with the Department of Natural Resources, our uh, SAV group with the Bay Program and the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science. So it's a pocket field guide you can download and find out about all the different underwater grasses that are there. Um, and what you're seeing here on the right is just a sample page. It does a kind of pull out photo of all the different uh, grasses so that you can start to ID them and learn about what they do. And uh, those grasses clean the water, they filter out nutrients and they uh, provide a nursery for a lot of different creatures. So very, very interesting plants. Um, we've got all kinds of guides for it. And you can go to the next. And you know, it's that full watershed. So when something impacts all of us, like the COVID-19 pandemic that we all kind of figured out how to, how to weather together, um, we'll put out information to, to help you step through that. So we knew that when things are stressful, going outside and experiencing nature can really be healing. And we wanted to make sure you could access that information. So we had an article about um, how to get outside and stay distant in these uncertain times. Um, and it gave you federal and state parks for each of the states and gave you information about whether or not they were open, how many people could go there, uh, you know, if they had different times during COVID and we would update it every couple of weeks. So when something big is going on in the watershed, you can always reach out to the program to find some information. And if you don't see what you're looking for, just ask. Uh, you can reach us on in events like this. So I hope you guys are putting questions in the box. If you, know, if you have any questions, we'll do live panel and answer them. You can uh, reach us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're always monitoring those accounts. You can reach us directly through the website and send us a message. That's chesapeakebay.net. Or if you're reading an article and you have uh, questions about that specific topic. You can comment right underneath of that. We'll also see those and get right back to you. So let us know whatever you need. All right, and here's our list of everything that we mentioned today, all the different activities, um, links to find things out, guides, uh, events that are coming up. So the Juneteenth celebration with Black Girls Hike RBA, Go ahead and uh, copy paste off the screen and we'll get into our, our questions from the audience. So Marisa, I believe you're monitoring our Q&A box. Do we have any questions from attendees? I'll ask uh, Michael and Alvin to pop back on video and uh, we can answer our questions. I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. Um, but I know Jake is monitoring Facebook, so he can also say if there's any questions coming in on there. All right, well, give you a couple minutes to put in any questions you might have about how to access that information or what might be coming up. In the meantime, Michael or Alvin, anything you'd like to add in? Um. I guess I can give a little preview for the Rogue Ranger. Um, it will be out again this summer. Last summer, of course, you know, it was on hiatus due to COVID-19, but we are excited and looking forward to having the Rogue Ranger back out this summer at a few events. Um, one of the first ones you can check us out at is the parade and festival in Annapolis for um, July 4th. Um, and then we'll also be set up at a few state parks throughout the summer um, with our new bilingual um, interpretive outreach assistant 
team um, from Chesapeake Conservancy. So keep a lookout for the Rogue Ranger this summer and into the fall, it'll be exciting. Thanks, Michael. And I'll tell you what, there in the Chesapeake Bay program resources that you see, the find a group is, you know, wherever you are in the watershed, you can go to that link and type in your zip code and it'll bring up a lot of the different organizations that are right in your area. So you can reach out to find out more information, find a cool thing to go to. Same with attend an event, uh, see what's going on in the watershed. You can search by location or by type of event and then public access. Um, so we're always looking to add more and more public access sites. Um, and by we, that's people who work in conservation in general. <laughs> it's everybody involved in that um, because nature's really for all of us. So public access sites get updated. New ones are added all the time. You can find out about them at this link. Uh, you'll put in your zip code and it'll show you public access sites that are near you and give you really valuable information about them. Like, are there bathrooms available? Can I bring my dog? Is there a boat launch? You know, that kind of thing. Um, so give that a look if you're if you're looking to get out in the watershed anywhere near you. Hi, Caitlin, we have no questions. All right, well, yeah, I, I guess, you know what, uh, Michael, Alvin, you did a great job answering everybody's questions in your presentation before it started. So we'll go ahead and log off. Um, remember that you can reach out to any of us. Our email addresses are on that first slide, um, the speaker slide. Reach out to us on the resources links here or find all of us on social media. If a question pops up in the meantime that you forgot to ask, we'll still be here. Hey, Caitlin, we actually just got a question. Huh. Um, so this is a fabulous wealth of resources. And of course, today, many of us are already quote unquote members for the choir, what is or could the Bay program team do to reach those who don't know who we are? Ah, well, part of what we do is uh, public webinars like this. So it's live on our Facebook right now. So if you're just scrolling down Facebook uh, and you happen to follow the program, you'll see that pop up there. It also comes up in sponsorships. And then we do a lot of reaching out to different organizations. So we're always looking to meet new groups, new individuals, new communities, and, and get involved. Um, like Alvin was talking about the Festival Del Rio Anacostia. We go to that each year. I'd say there's uh, another 15 organizations at least that we've started uh, developing programs with or, uh, or events with because of that festival. So, and, and everyone should check that one out. Um, there's free fishing, free boat rides, food and music and dancing. It's it's pretty fantastic in Bladensburg. Um, so it definitely something you wanna get to. And then we also have our newsletter um, that goes out to organizations that work with the general public. Um, any and, and we help to amplify the information for other organizations. So as well as our own. So if you have a, an event coming up or a conference coming up or a job opening, you send those over to the Bay program and we add them into our newsletter. So that's a one-stop shop for, if you wanna find out what's going on in the watershed, that's your resource. Uh, Michael or Alvin, anything you'd like to add? Well, I mean, from my perspective, it, you know, it's a little bit of a sense of scale and that's a, that, that question is one that we are all trying to crack. Um, at least within the Anacostia watershed, and this past year has been really hard, right? We haven't had a lot of in-person, but we're we're really trying to do some targeted uh, social media. So that's, it takes a little more time, but um, that's like, for example, around where the Festival Del Rio and Acostia is, um, uh, we target communities in hashtags, for example, or we um, try to not even partner, but share church activities on ours or, and that just gets it in front of the eyes of kind of outside of the choir, I guess, like that, what you're saying. And that, that is, it, it, if anybody else knows how to do that, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> I'd like to know, but 
anyways, that's one of the approaches we're taking right now is um, trying to kind of each event reach a neighborhood nearby. We also uh, travel the watershed. So when we're doing different stories, uh, Will Parson is our multimedia specialist. When he is doing stories and taking photos and videos, travels the watershed, the whole 64,000 square miles. Um, so we're always meeting people and, and finding ways to engage in events there. And then the program itself works through work groups and teams that anyone can join. A lot of different organizations sit on them. They're also open to the public. So if you're interested in a particular topic and, and you'd like to check it out um, and see how it works with the program, send us a message if you have any questions or just show up to those meetings. They are public and on our calendar on our website. I guess I can also um, kind of echo Aubin's statement. Like, you know, last year was difficult. There weren't many in-person events um, with everything shut down. Um, so we had to develop alternative ways to, you know, reach the entire watershed community and beyond. Um, so, you know, we developed, um, you know, virtual visits on Find Your Chesapeake to showcase so many virtual ways to explore the Chesapeake Bay. And we have all these awesome resources. Um, but, you know, we're still in development, but we're hoping with, you know, this year and then in coming years to kind of expand our services, especially with the Rogue Ranger having on additional staff and capacity to be able to continue to meet people where they are. Um, every year prior to COVID, we would add more festivals and events. Um, and of course, my emails are always open um, to receive invitations for the Rogue Ranger to go to any events or festivals. Um, we try not to you know, discriminate with events. We want to try to go to every event as we know that it's important to bring these national park experiences and activities and ideas and themes to so many different communities. Great. I hope we answered your question. Uh, if you have any more, uh, reach out to us through all the different channels we've, we've talked about. And I hope you'll join us next month. I'm going to give a thank you to Michael and Alvin for joining us today and talking about the resources and uh, with and events with their organizations. Next month for June, we will be talking about everyone's favorite blue crab. Join us next, oh wait, it is June. <laughs> for July, we'll be talking about blue crabs. So join us next month and reach out to us if you need anything. Thanks. <laughs>